This video is brought to you by Milanote. Who gave moths the audacity to look like this? They weigh nothing. Some of them don't have mouths and only live for a couple of days, and yet they're still better dressed than I am 90% of my life. I would like the audacity to look like this. As a lot of you probably know, I have a particular affection for the Luna Moth, because they look less like something from our world, and more like an exotic plant from that Mortis planet in Star Wars. So obviously, I am no stranger to poaching the beauty of the Luna Moth for my own clothing designs, but something that I have yet to do is design a whole Luna Moth gown. I've been trying to design a Luna Moth gown for about a year now, and it wasn't until a couple of weeks ago, whenever I was doing some warm-ups in my sketchbook, when I randomly stumbled on something that I think I want to move forward with. And it only took a whole year. <laughs> So for the design, I'm thinking a full-length gown with a gathered sharp bust line and a super layered, wispy, tattered skirt. Over top that is a matching corset inspired by Edwardian S-Bend corsets to get a super dramatic, wide hip silhouette. I want to decorate the corset with tons of detailed beading and applique with floral and celestial motifs. And the look is completed with matching sleeves and a collar decorated in the same way, a moth-inspired elven crown, and a waterfall cape designed to look like the wings of a luna moth. This design is very much an amalgamation of a bunch of different designs that I've seen online that have inspired me, but remixed together into something that I can really put my own spin on. So that is the gist of the design, but whenever I've been thinking about a design, as long as I've been thinking about this Luna Moth dress, it's best to do as much visual exploration as possible before beginning the physical project. Luckily, today's sponsor, Milanote, is an absolutely fantastic tool for planning creative projects, and I have been using it to plan the design process of this dress. I like a really unstructured workflow whenever I'm brainstorming projects like this because I'm constantly getting new ideas that I need to nail down visually. This process with Milanote is super intuitive and allows you to organize your thoughts in whatever kind of layout you want. Whenever you're starting a new project, you can choose from over a hundred different templates tailored to every kind of creative project there is. For my boards here, I began using the project plan template. And for my main project board, I can have a full overview of the concept. Here I usually have key visuals like design sketches, color palettes, and important lists like materials and tasks that I need to complete during the project. And then from there, I can dive into different rabbit holes and add as many more boards to detail specific areas of my project as my heart desires. For projects like this, adding an expansive mood board is always essential and Milanote allows me to add in as many images, videos, notes, annotations, links, and color palettes as I could possibly want to get my ideas across. I constantly use the annotation feature to highlight key shapes and visually link different ideas that are on my boards. It's one of my favorite parts of Milanote because it feels like working on a physical whiteboard. Of course, for a bigger project like this, going really in depth for the visual exploration is really important so I added a ton of detailed brainstorming boards like aesthetic inspirations for the project, makeup and styling inspiration for the reveal shoot, research about new materials and techniques I'd be using, and even references for the kind of embroidery and beading details I'd like to add. It was particularly helpful to be able to visualize the thumbnails for all of these fabric and applique choices in one place just by simply pasting the link and from there I could add annotations on my thoughts and even circle the items that I planned on purchasing and even take my to the listing to purchase them with one click. Of course, this is a lot of imagery to just pull off the web, so adding visual inspirations for a project is made even easier by Milanote's Web Clipper browser extension. With the Web Clipper, I can save images or links from all over the internet to my boards with the simple click of a button, so I never miss a good piece of inspiration, even if I'm just doing some casual browsing. Finally, this didn't end up being something that I used on this project, but another great resource is just how collaborative the process can be whenever you're using Milanote. Working with other creatives on projects can be hectic, because because everyone has their own process and style. But with Milanote, you can invite other collaborators to edit and add to your boards, leave comments and feedback, and even collaborate in real time, even if you're thousands of miles away from each other. So if you want to use Milanote to flesh out your next creative project, Milanote is available for free with no time limit. Sign up using the link in the description and start brainstorming your next masterpiece today. Thank you so much to Milanote for sponsoring this video. Now I have to actually go buy some fabric. Get in, losers. We're driving an hour away to go shopping because I I live in the middle of nowhere. So I made a special trip to the Joann's to get fabric for this project, and I looked everywhere in the Joann's. They didn't have anything that I needed. Did I mention that I drove an hour just to get the fabric in person so that I could feel it, caress it, emotionally connect to its essence? I was tempted by a lot of this trim, but I didn't even have my base fabric, so I didn't know my colors. I couldn't buy anything. The only thing that I walked out with was this lovely lace fabric because she was on sale. So I guess it it wasn't a total loss, but I had to buy everything else on the internet.
Okay, so patterning. For this project, I am definitely very inspired by like the Edwardian S-Bend corset style. To me, it is just the most like dramatic look to it. The flare on the hips is it's pretty much exactly what I'm going for. Problem is, I do not know how to make a pattern for this type of corset and I don't have one. So I have managed to locate one on Etsy and I think that this will probably work. However, the original is, I guess, based on like an actual Edwardian corset and the waist is like 20 inches basically. So I would have to figure out how to scale and size this corset. Everything that's going on here, I think is pretty much what I am going for. So I think that I might give this a shot, see if I can alter it into what I need it to be. Fingers crossed this works because, you know, Okay, so after printing this out and trying to do like a paper mock-up about three times, I think I arrived at something that actually could maybe work for a first mock-up. I feel like this looks pretty nice, especially in the front. I like the amount of hip spring that's happening. And then it doesn't close in the back. It doesn't really come to the center, but that's okay because I'm planning on having at least a little bit of a lacing gap. So I am going to do this with some painting canvas because with this mock-up, I'm not gonna go all crazy and add like boning channels and all of the like fancy corset stuff to it. I don't have time for that. I don't feel like doing it, so I am just not going to do it. This is literally just to see if it fits. I'm gonna put a temporary buskin and a lacing strip and that's all you're gonna get. So let's do it. <laughs> Status update. Last night I was able to get a little bit more work done, but not nearly enough because once again, patterning is bamboozling me. So first of all, I was able to fix the little fit pattern that I was having with my corset. All I did was add about half an inch to two of the panels on the back. And at the very least now it's able to kind of close in a straight way. I don't have that huge gaping. However, I don't get nearly as much reduction from it. This dress I really am looking for, the drama. So I'll figure it out. I'm probably just gonna leave it how it is and just like add extra padding if anything. The thing that didn't go so smoothly yesterday was trying to drape the pattern for the dress that's supposed to go underneath the corset and I'm just like being reminded once again of how bad my dress form is for draping. I don't know why I keep trying to drape on it. It's not really made for that because like right in the middle where the waist is there's a giant seam that like disconnects the rib cage area from the rest of the dress form and it's practical for like making it adjustable but trying to drape on it is just a headache because you have this gap and there's no way to get a smooth drape without like bulking it up or adding some kind of padding to it. So uh, I've tried draping the bust area multiple times on the dress form and I tried like a gathering method a couple of different times and I just didn't really end up liking how it looked. Uh, I think I am in the end just going to do some kind of gathering or laying with the viol. I don't know if that's how you say that or the organza that I have because it was just looking a little bit too prom dress trying to do it with the underneath layer of the satin. And then for draping the actual bodice itself, you see how this looks. It just ain't it. <laughs> it doesn't fit right on my body and I don't feel like going through the effort to like fit it and then still just have it not look right. I did also try draping the skirt and like same deal. I don't love how it looks. Just to have something to connect the skirt to and also have a dress that's functional outside of this entire project, I'm going to be using the Rose Cafe bodice pattern again. I've used this a number of times on the channel. I know it fits me well. It's easy enough to make so I'm going to default to this and then I'm going to do something else with the cup so that it kind of fits the cup that I've already made. Today, the name of the game is making progress and having like kind of a functional dress so that I can maybe alter that and build on top of and get it a little bit closer to the design that I have in mind. I'm gonna get somewhere that works 
and then I'll go from there. So like I said, the base of the bodice was super straightforward. I just cut the outer pieces as well as the lining and assembled those right sides together. I am of course then adding the proper boning channels so that this strapless dress does not fall off of me. Then I'm sewing the outer and lining layers right sides together, making sure to clip all of those pesky little corners before I flip it inside out. I'm also clipping any curves to make sure there's no tension there. And then I'm just stitching down a couple of the seams to make sure that this bodice looks nice and crispy. For the bust, I drafted some pieces on my dress form based on some foam cups that I made. For the foam cup that goes inside the cup of the bodice, I just patterned this by draping a pattern off of a well-fitting bra, copied it onto a little bit of craft foam, and sewed some bias tape onto them to serve as channels for some vertical and underwire boning. This should help me have some structure, especially for that curved, pointy part of the bust line. Even though this dress is going to go underneath the corset, I still want to make it as fancy as possible, so I'm also gathering and draping some of the sheer fabric I have over the bust just to give it a little bit more shape and texture. I'm steaming those to make sure they stay in place and then pinning them right sides together with a lining piece, and then sewing them down, leaving a little hole to create a pocket for that foam cup to go in. After repeating those steps on the other side, I have two little ruched cups, and I could machine sew these onto the bodice, but I don't feel like it, so I'm lazily choosing the not lazy thing to do by hand sewing them on so that I have the cleanest finish that I can possibly muster. And hey, it's still not that clean even, but you know what? Baby steps. To finish out the back closure and actually do a fitting, I was going to use these giant grommets that I happen to have on hand. I even punched the holes and started installing them only to realize that I don't have a way to actually close these and apparently a hammer is not strong enough to do that for some reason. So instead I had to make a bunch of these little ribbon loops and I finished this up doing that ribbon loop lacing method instead. This way works just as well. It's just more annoying because then I have to make these little loops and turn them inside out and it's just, it's a whole thing. And yay, with that, the first corset bodice thing that I gotta make is done. And for some mysterious reason, I have chosen to make another one of those in this video. Surprisingly enough, once I got the fit issues figured out, the S-Ben corset was pretty straightforward to put together. Of course, naturally, it took absolutely forever. There are so many steps to putting a corset together, but I would say this pattern actually gave me less trouble than a lot of the corset patterns that I've worked with. Does this have something to do with the fact that I have made most of the corset patterns that I have worked with, and this one is not made by me? I don't know, I'm gonna choose to ignore that correlation. But I would say the biggest thing that helped this to go so smoothly was I paid a ton of attention to the pattern during the cutting phase. I marked every single edge of the pattern. I marked my seam allowances. I marked where all my little boning channels would go and I did the same thing on the lining. This is an obvious step to making something like this turn out good that I often ignore because it takes forever and I don't like it. But I'm forcing myself to do this sort of thing lately and I think that's character development, isn't it? I mean, your girl even did a mock-up in this video. A mock-up for a corset. All sorts of character development happening today. I definitely think the end result of this corset was also helped by the fact that I very recently also made an 1860s corset. I love that corset, but that one definitely looked worse and there were a lot of fit issues going on. So I'm really glad that I was able to correct some of those things on this one. To finish her up, I'm just adding a busk, which is a process that I think I also improved on working on this corset. The last one that I installed was a little bit rough. And of course, after my least favorite step, the obligatory grommet time, which was worse on this corset because there are so many grommets, I could add a little bit of lacing, rabbit ear style, and finally try the actual corset on my body. And like I said, I am so happy with the fit of this. I got the back to close nicely. It's not warping anymore. And it is surprisingly comfortable. To finish, finish it up, I just trimmed it down and added a little bit of matching bias tape to all of the edges, which made this corset look not perfect, but maybe the best corset that I've made so far. And after a moment of triumph and basically all the hard stuff out of the way, it is time for more hard stuff because we still have all this stuff to pattern out. It, sorry, the cat is trying to attack my feet. Oh, I love this corset pattern so much. Like, I think out of all of the corset patterns that I've sewed and used so far, this is probably my favorite. I think it's the most flattering on my particular build. If you would also like to use this corset pattern for a project of yours, I will have it linked in the description because she is, <sighs> someone wanted to be in the video, so. 
for the rest of the night, what I still really need to get patterned so that I know whether or not it's realistic for me to even make it. The sleeves. I don't know why I feel so compelled to give every single design that I make the arm sleeves from The Legend of Korra. I also have kind of a high collared neck piece. And then finally, the biggest piece that I need to pattern out and the one that I am the most afraid of. I wanna make a waterfall drapey elven cloak to go over all of this that also has kind of the shape of a Luna moth wing whenever I stick my arm out. I've gone on the internet to do research to like try to figure out how in theory I would pattern this and make it and I have a very loose idea. But there's absolutely no promises right now. Do you know? She doesn't know. I'm gonna try to start easy and just like work on the sleeve pattern. So for this, I'm just gonna try to pin it on myself. I don't have a better method. Okay. I don't know exactly why it's not working that great because I could have sworn that I've done this before. Seems like the kind of thing that I've done before. See, the other way to do this is to measure it all out and do it the correct way, but I don't feel like it. I don't wanna. I'm determined to make this stupid pinning job work. Watch me. 15 minutes later. Let me ask you something. Do you feel foolish yet? So, sleeve down. Now let's do the neck piece. I'm working in ascending order from things that scare me a little bit to the thing that is the stuff of nightmares for me right now, given that I have a 1 a.m. caffeine brain. So the neck region that we're looking for is probably just about right here. This is just pissing me off. And just like that, it's perfect. Look, barely any effort at all. Again, I want it to just sort of do this. That gap isn't great for this, but you know what? It's fine. Then on the back here, really want to work sort of those key shapes into this piece. Sort of a wispy shape here into another wispy shape. Maybe something like that, like this maybe. I think that's pretty nice. And finally, to the patterning that I dread the most. So basically the plan here is we want the fabric kind of gathering in the back. That way I have plenty of room whenever I stick my arm out. So from here, the shape would be essentially moth wing. So for reference, I'm gonna mark my wingspan. Think mothy thoughts, light bulbs, matches, bark. <laughs> Lamp. Lamp, lamp, lamp. And after looking at some pictures of Luna Moth wings again, I think that I might want to actually make the cape two pieces. With the shape of the wings, they really kind of emphasize the width of the top wing. And I definitely kind of want to give the cloak a tail. I think what I'm gonna do is cut out this top shape for the top part of the wing and then sort of just drape more of a traditional triangular cloak shape for the bottom of the wing and have it do that like draping from the top situation that I had on the mannequin. Oh, also on the outside edges of this top piece, I think I'm gonna try to do a lettuce hem because something about Luna Moths just, they have the essence of fresh lettuce, you know? For the skirt, I've already kind of taken the liberty of just making a couple of layers of a giant circle skirt. That way I just have something that's like voluminous and flowy on the bottom that I can kind of like work with, maybe add things on top of, because that's the gist of the skirt in my design. It's got some like big slits in it that run all the way up my leg almost, but most of it is just layers of flowy fabric. So. I might take some like triangular pieces out of the circle skirt that I've made so that I can get that effect. But for the most part, that's at least like a base that I can work with. And if nothing else, it is a skirt already. So I hate defaulting to a circle skirt on every single project that I make. I really need to learn how to make at least one other style of skirt. 
but for now it's gonna have to do. So I mentioned taking some triangular chunks out of the skirt to get those high slits and I did end up doing that. Here I'm just patterning out a rough shape to use as the template for that and here I'm just trimming down the length of my circle skirt because I made it a little bit too long and then I'm folding that triangular shape in half and adding some little triangular cutouts. I did the same thing to the voil layer that goes on top and after trying this on I thought the flow of this was okay. It was at least a good bit closer to my concept art than what I was working with before. So next to add a little bit more texture and movement I'm cutting out more giant triangular pieces to layer on top of that. I'm doing this with all of the leftover organza and voil that I had to make sure that I leave as little scrap fabric as possible. And this is the general vibe of that layering. I thought that it worked pretty well actually. While I was at it I also cut out all of my moth wing pieces and oh yeah uh, for the sleeves and the neck piece. Would you believe it? I made some sleeves and a neck piece. There's not much explanation to be had there, so enjoy a brief construction montage. Hope you enjoyed this brief construction montage. So my shape language for this dress is very curly, wispy, Lothlorien core Galadriel's hair, you know what I mean? So I want to finish off all of the edges of the skirt and cloak with what is called a lettuce hem. So this is kind of the result that you end up getting. These are going to be the little Luna moth tails. I really like how it looks because it adds some body to the hem of your fabric. It's just nice. It's like wavy hair for your skirt, you know? It's like your skirt's all done up for the function. It's great. This goes out to all the vegans out there. The producer's gonna try to get on my lap, which is not helpful for the lettuce hem. Don't have a cat on your lap while you're trying to do this. All I'm gonna do is take this fishing line here and roll the edge of the fabric over it. Then with a zigzag stitch, just in case it down <laughs> all along the entire edge of all of this fabric. When you do this, the natural curl of the plastic from being around the spool of fishing line kind of puts a curl in your fabric. And I did use this method for any of the edges of pieces that I had that weren't bias cut because some of them were not. But as I discovered later on, anything that is bias cut, like for example, a circle skirt, of course has natural stretch to it. So you can just stretch the fabric as you go whenever you're sewing and it basically creates the same effect. So that's what I did for most of this, which was a huge time saver, thankfully. But oh dearest viewer, it didn't save that much time because I still had to go along the edge of every single piece of fabric that I had, which as you may recall, I had created more edges in by taking giant triangles out of them. And oh, thanks for asking. This did take my entire life. But eventually I did reach the end of this mound of fabric and I could breathe a sigh of relief. Oh yeah, that's why I usually don't hem my fabric. <laughs> Home stretch, everybody. Yep. Yep, that's I am. So the last big thing that I need to do is sew the skirt to the top side of the bodice. Also, look at her. She's giving jellyfish. Makes me want to go frolic around jellyfish fields and sing a little sea shanty. You know what I mean? You really need an explanation for this. I just, I attached the skirt on, you know? Sometimes in my videos for voiceover, I'm tired. And I really just feel like, yeah. And so, next, I made the thing. The thing hath gotten made. Then the narrator fell asleep for many hours. So the next morning all that was left for me to do was attach this little clasp onto the collar so that I could fasten it. And then I loosely tacked down all of the little cloak pieces onto the collar piece with just a little bit of calm hand sewing. Folks, I'll be honest, this little drapey cloak is probably the least thought out part of this project and I didn't know how it was gonna go, but you know what? That's not half bad. And with that, this dress is finally done for now.
Um, if you can't tell, the dress that I showed in the reveal is definitely not exactly what I wanted it to be in the initial design that I made. And that's because the dress isn't done yet. I decided to, for once, show just an ounce of restraint this week and hold off on a lot of the detailing, the applique. I basically decided to get like the bases done this week, leave all of the meticulous detailing for later because that is still something that I really, really wanna do. But I want my brain to be able to completely focus on that. I was gonna discuss this in detail and list all the changes that I wanna make and things that I wanna do in the next iteration of this dress, but it got dark while I was talking in this footage. So I'm just gonna do that in voiceover instead. Dead. Number one, beading, applique, all of the fancy stuff that I want to do that I didn't get to in this video. That's probably going to be the main event in the next installment of working on this dress. Number two, Luna Moth antenna crown. I didn't get to that at all in this video. That'll also be something I do in the next video. Number three, the dress has some fit issues. And honestly, I had to finish it up so fast that the inside of this dress is kind of a mess. Don't you dare look on the inside of the underdress. She's not done yet, don't you dare look at it. It. The skirt also looks good on a dress form. Doesn't look as good in motion as I wanted it to. She's probably gonna need a second draft. We need to resolve some fit issues in the bust area. And the collar piece for the cape ended up looking better than I thought it would, but she might also need a second draft too. Finally, colors. Whenever I ordered this fabric off the internet, it looked way more green in the images and then it came and it was just, it's, it's aqua, it's blue. It's not the worst thing and I did try to offset that a little bit by adding the layer of greenish or Ganza over it, but I feel like Luna Moths definitely fall more on the green side, and I also think the aqua's clashing a little bit with the purple that I have. So, uh, listen, we might be getting the airbrush out. <sighs> It's not personal. <laughs> I also want to make a matching staff for this because I am planning on having this be a Ren Faire costume that I wear this year. So you have that maybe to look forward to as well. I've just been thinking about this dress for a while and I do really want it to end up looking in the final result how I want it to look. So she just needs a little bit more love. I'll be honest, some of the end reveal footage is like a little underwhelming. I'm a little disappointed, but I just have to remind myself that it'll look that much better whenever I have the before and after, whenever I add all of my fancy details and fix all of the things that I don't like about it. I hope that I fed you enough with this video for you to be like, hmm, you know what? I think I could go for seconds. Anyways, I have been speaking and rambling about this for far too long, and honestly, I have no idea how I'm going to edit this into the end of a video. If you're still here, Thank you so much. It's gotten dark and you can't even see me, but what a smile I have on my face for the fact that you're still here. Um, I appreciate you. If you would like to stay here whenever I finally finish this and improve on all of the things that I just complained about, please, I encourage you to subscribe and especially turn on notifications because my upload schedule is again deep in some circle of hell. But of course, as always, the biggest thank you for these videos and my sanity, quite frankly, goes to all of my wonderful patrons and especially my executive producers. You guys are the wind beneath my Luna Moth wings. <laughs> and please don't delete your pledges because of how cheesy that was. <laughs> okay, bye. Mossy Raven, Seno Takai, I'm not saying that name on the internet, ABW Makes, Samalama MC Samabama, Sarah, Crimson Moon 04, Liana, Ermler Jean, Anubix, Breeza, Sony, Brian, Phoenix, Rose Draconi, Freedom and Gus Gus, Francesca Sliwa, Kat, Dodo, Xyle S, Agent Dot Sketchy, Thea Maia, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, Megan Penland, Enozine, India Gloom, Hypnos, Katie, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, I Hang Out with Cats at Parties, and Bean the Bread. There's just like, it's metaphorical rain. Cause like, he started a holy war and we're celebrating that for some reason. Can you be cute for the people? <laughs> I mean, I know you don't have to try, but what is it about cats that like you put a rectangle down and they're just on that rectangle?